Welcome back to Your View. Thanks for staying with us. So today we'll be having two interviews, one with our a special guest for, who is a, a National Assembly lawmaker. We'll talk to him later. And later, and now we're talking about, uh, we're having actually an interview with, um, I had an interview with, with Sir Kassintin Adebukola Adebutu, the founder and chairman, Premier Lotto Nigeria Limited, um, and also known as Baba Ijebu. So these two interviews, one with Baba Ijebu now with me, and then later with the lawmaker. We're going to be learning from these two gentlemen. But I had that special interview with, with, uh, with the chairman of uh, Premier Lotto. You want to watch this. Welcome to Your View with Murayo. I have with me Sir Kasintin Adebukola Adebutu. He is the chairman of Premier Lotto and the founder of the Kasintin Adebukola Adebutu Foundation. Welcome, sir, to the show. Thank you. So good to have you on this segment. I was at your office last week and I saw the gamut of crowd waiting to see you. Mm -hmm. And I was bewildered, like, what is going on here? I see them, and I'm used to it. And you waited till the end of the day? Yes. Wow. Yes. Goodness. Well, we know you as the Ashoju of Bar of Lagos. Yes. How did you come about that title? It's an honor bestowed on me by the KBC of Bar Kulu, the of Bar of Lagos. Right. And what does the Ashoju for your, for your information. Yes. Even though I have several titles, ship transit titles, I've never asked for one by mm. myself. Mm. So it's always wow. given it to me honorarily. Let's talk about your business. Yes. Premier Lotus started 2001, and um, in less than two decades, your net worth is about $500 million, according to Wikipedia. And People would say, this is money from the masses, people who are... Do you feel that your business is a sort of exploitation of the poor or a way to help the poor aspire to be rich? Is that What would you say your business has done to the people? I've made it quite clear uh, many times. My business is the stock exchange mm. of the ordinary man. Right. So... Mm. That's a good one. That stock exchange of the ordinary man. Ordinary man, yes. So, this stock exchange of the ordinary man, could you explain it to the, somebody out there who has no idea what the business is like? From the moment I buy a ticket to the moment I win, could you just run us through very quickly that process? Eh, you buy your ticket and by so doing, it gives you hope. You gamble. I won't call it gambling. Okay. It's gaming. Gaming. Okay. Yeah. So it gives you hope. Right. And believe me, it, because of this, because people now have hope, mm. it has taken a lot of people out of the streets. Yes. A and lot of that. people from committing this type of crime or that because yeah. now they have a hope. I know some people have actually had made money. From this, they, yes. I mean, they are, um, they've been selling tickets and they, they're doing so well. And I wonder how this money actually trickles down. People always assume that the money doesn't trickle down to the man. And, and please help correct that impression. People actually do get money, get rich from, from this gambling. Yes, they do. From this. You see, our role is like that of uh, the Yoruba language, Alajo. Yes. You know, so we, we do the collection. And we distribute the money now, to lucky ones. <laughs> exactly, lucky ones. Yes. The National Lottery Regulatory Commission yes. was founded 2005. That's four years after you started. Yes. Now you have a whole four years without being regulated, without any sort of oversight from the federal government. Could you tell us about that first four years? How was it? Was it that you just, just you on your own? I will not say there was no regulation okay. within that period. Okay. For your information, every state will operate, will obtain a license from that state government, even though there's a national license. Okay. So in other words, before the national license, the state licenses were in operation. 
So you cannot say that during that period there was no regulation. Okay. okay. Yes. Good, good to know that you played that point. Now, many countries also have told us that in the early days, yes. many countries owned, the governments actually owned the lottery institutions yes. and sublet it to other private companies. Yes. But in this part of the world, private companies own it and give a portion to the government. Do you feel if we really want true infrastructural development in this part of the world, we should begin to think, government should begin to think of owning lottery schemes? If I can uh, say my mind, yes. I don't see government doing, doing well in any business. Mm. Now you, can, you can look at it by yourself. So, and if you look back, Several states, they operated lottery. But today, you cannot find one in existence. Imagine the old Western government lottery, Bendel state lottery, uh, Eastern state government lottery. Where are they today? I don't believe right. government can run business and lottery in particular. Okay, still on the business of government, um, Mr. Fowler, FIRS, was saying, I think a couple of days ago, that um, they're going to begin to automatically deduct VAT from winnings. But it's unfortunate that when these sort of things are coming up, the stakeholders cannot carry that long. Mm -hmm. for, for your information, all my life, most of my life, I've been gaming. Mm. So I'm on, I'm on, on a, I am an authority in gaming. Yes. You see, now government wants to collect VAT on winnings. But let me ask you a question. Here's somebody who stakes less than 100,000 and he wins 50,000. Now you want to collect VAT on that. In my mind, that is not fair to the, to the staker, to the player. Mm -hmm. I think what government should do is to take VAT on actual winning, mm -hmm. something above your stake. Uh -huh. You understand? Right. So if, if, if you put 100 you Nara, you win 50 Nara, and you are going to pay VAT again, you are, you are a loser both ways. Right. If it can be worked out, I think it would be ideal to have VAT on winnings. That is, whatever is above right. the stake of players. Do the rich get involved in betting? Yes, but they do it secretly. Secretly? Yes. Wow. How does the rich bet? Now, you can now bet with your phone. So the, their light, they prefer that because they don't have to go to the betting right, office. Right. Yes. Interesting. Yeah. When did that start? Quite a while. Okay. Yes. Nice. Interesting. Yes. Okay, we're going to go on a break now. When we come back, our guest is still here with us. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Sir Adebutu, you're probably known as Baba Jebu. People are just used to calling you that. How, has the, how did the name come about? And of course you're from Ijebu, you know that, but 
Do they call you by Jabu in your, in your side of town too? Actually, I don't know how the name comes by. <laughs> and for your information today, people call me Baba Jebu even more than my ordinary name. Oh, wow. It's a name given to me by the public. Baba Jebu, last week when we saw you, you said we should allow you to rest, that you want to enjoy your money. Oh, how yeah. do you enjoy your money? How? What do you do to enjoy your money? I like holiday. Ah. I like holiday. What kind of countries have you been to? Oh, going to places. I'm traveling on Friday, coming back in May. Okay. July, I'm going for the long one. I, I, I'm going on cruise. On a cruise? Yeah. Wow, what country are you going to? <laughs> Which country? The Caribbean. Ah, the Caribbean, <laughs> nice. You go alone or go with your going with oh, wife? my family. With your family. Yeah. Talking about your family, how many wives do you have? We, have, we, have, we hear that you have multiple wives. How many wives do you have? Who told you that? We hear that. You have multiple wives. Who officially, how many do you have? Who told you that? Online. Online? <laughs> yes. Oh my God. <laughs> so, like, officially though, how many wives do you have? Two. Two, okay. Uh, that's, yeah. that's fair enough for a man as wealthy as you yeah, are. Yeah. Um, and how do you... My father had two wives too. Yeah. And he wa was able to manage it. Monday oh, yeah. to Friday, to Monday to Thursday. It's not easy to manage yes. a polygamous home. Exactly. But, so how but, do you manage it? Well... By God's grace, no partiality. Right. You know, and uh, the junior must respect the senior. Okay. And it, I think it depends on the man. Right. Okay. So if you play your card well, yes. there'll be peace in the home. So let me ask you very, uh, a straight question. Do you have a will? Of course, yes. Okay, good. So at least there will be issues. Apart from that, I've done something which is more than will. Hmm. What have you done? What I have, I've already given out over ninety-five percent in my lifetime. Oh wow! And ownership has changed. Fantastic. So no lawyer can fault that. Oh, fantastic! Yes, Great. because even will can be challenged in court. Mm -hmm. But what you do in your lifetime, Not especially what has changed ownership in your lifetime. There's, there's no lawyer who can afford that. Hmm. So what would you like to be remembered for? What's that thing you want people to say, yes, Papa Jebu was, this was who he, he was? Well, this is what I tell my children every day. Yeah. I want to be remembered for a good name, hmm. not money. To me, money is just a means of living. Money can go, money can come. But good name will remain for life. And that's what I want to be remembered for. We also know you're a philanthropist. People come to you. I mean, on Tuesday, I was overwhelmed by the amount of people that came. Some people came on their wheelchair. Some people came with hospital records. People just coming to you for help all the time. How do you seep through these numbers to know the ones who are genuine and help them out? Yeah, we, 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 we do our best to... to sort out what is genuine and what is more um, we make a payment to hospital to school directly okay. so that's a sort of means of right. checking all this uh, yes we also observed yes that there may be a strain between your relationship with the former yes. president Obasanjo yes. because of the fallout between your daughter and his son is that true has it affected your relationship for your information, the relationship between former President Obasanjo and myself has been in existence before our children, before they, before they meet themselves. Okay. So the the, the, the the relationship between our children has nothing to do with our personal relationship. Okay. So we'll take it that we're still friends with him. Oh, we interact. We talk every time. He visits me. I visit him. You know, so the relationship is good. Fantastic. Yes. A lot of people want to know how you... You, you have two sons that we know, Ulushego and Ladi, that are doing so well. People want to know how you raise them. What are those um, tips you can give parents today in raising children who are responsible, who are doing great things, who are taken, over, taken after you? How, what tips can you give some parents out there? Uh, let me correct the impression. 
they have two sons doing well. I have to thank God for his mercies on me. All my children are doing well. I'm doctor, I'm lawyer, I'm magistrate. They're all doing well. Wow. So that's no exception now. Okay. So how did you do it? Um, I empowered them because I believe that it is better to teach somebody how to fish than to give him fish. I empower all my children, and I'm happy about that progress. When you see empowered, because see progress. When you see empowered, because see this is a very important issue. Many parents, especially those who are wealthy, yes, end up spoiling their children such that even after they pass on, yes. many of them squander the wealth and yes. it becomes nothing. Yes. So when you say you empower your children, I want you to help us understand. What you did to make them such that they respond, their magistrates, their doctors, their lawyers, yes. where that today they are responsible citizens and they contribute their own quota. Yes. Help us. What did you do? Did you discipline them? Did you um, spank them? Did you throw money at them? Did they go for cruises as children? Did you say, oh no, no cruise for you until you are 18? What are those little things you did that made them? Okay, I'll just give one example. My male children, they are working. We are working together. I won't use the language they are working for me. Okay. And before we started, I called them. And unlike my friends, who we give that son, car, house, this, this, put them on salary. I said to them, don't work for me. Let's work together. How do we share profit? That's what I prayed up to today. They're not working for me. We're working together. And your daughters? And, we're she and the daughters, it's difficult to carry them along. Because they have to stay with their husband. Okay. I believe I do have too much. <laughs> <laughs> too much hold. Yes. Okay. On the daughters. Because, you know, they have to live their own life. But even then, I empower them to do one thing or the other. My first daughter is building a medical center at, at Lekki. Number two has got a spa at uh, Lekki also, wow. and so on and so on. So that is what I do. Let's talk about politics for a second. People assume that because of your wealth and your influence, you will go into politics. But someone said, oh no, he likes to support politicians. Help us clarify which is it, and if you support politicians, who, who do you support, and how do we get for to support For your information. Them? Yes. Politics. Never. But I am father of politicians. Mm. My house here is like a mecca. Mm. Politicians from left, right, front, back, they all come here. And I welcome all of them. Fantastic. I'm not a politician. Fantastic. Yes. Talking about your house. I have to ask you, who designed this beautiful house? <laughs> when I entered, I was like, oh my goodness, this is beautiful. <laughs> who, I mean, someone was saying, it has to be Julius Beggar. But who designed this house? I will tell you a true story. Will you believe it? No, well, tell us. It is designed by a Nigerian living in Dublin. Oh my goodness. Wow. He's an architect. The wife is an architect. When he was about to design the house, he came to me in London from Dublin. And he said, Daddy, I'm going to give you one of the most beautiful houses in the world. That's the language he used. Whether it is correct or not, I don't know. <laughs> oh, it is beautiful. Thank you very much. you entered, there was that sense, that's homeliness, exotic, but yet homely. Very Thank beautiful you. house. Thank you. So, your son, Daddy, yes. got into politics and he lost out. Yes. Did you encourage him or did you say, you know what? Drop politics, do something else. I've made several attempts to make him drop politics. But every time he told me I have politics in my blood. Mm. So I cannot stop him. Wow. Where did he get that from? You don't like politician. Your wives are not politician. Where's the where's the politics in his blood coming from? But well, don't forget, I told you I know. I have doctor, I have lawyer, right. I have magistrate, I have uh, this, I have that, I have farmer. So, right. okay. all of them cannot sleep yes. and face one side. One side. Yes.
we have to round up our conversation, but I'd like you to share advice to people out there. I know you get this question a lot of times, but um, it's important that we get information from people like you who have been successful mm -hmm. on that path to success. A lot of people just want to get rich quick, you know. So as a, as a father to politicians and to Nigerians at large, what do we do, especially with the way the young people are going today? What do we do to ensure... You have just used my language. Children of this days, they're too much in a hurry. They do not want to crawl before they walk. There was a time when I collect my salary, it is used to pay the debt of previous month. And that same first day of the month, we start again taking credit. But children of these days, they, they, they're not patient to do that. They're too much in a hurry. So my advice is that people should be patient and should learn to crawl before they walk. That, that's the problem we have. Thank you very much, sir. Yes. That's all we can take on this segment. Your view continues after the break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. So that was my conversation with Sir Kassintin Adebutu. He was a really, really fun guest to be. He was, you know, he's 83 years old. He's going to be 83 in, um, 84 in October. He's going to be 84 in October. And it was really hard to get him to have that, you know, ginger, sherry, ginger. sherry, ginger. He didn't ginger, he was just taking his time. Uh, yeah, but was, like, yeah, but it was a fantastic interview. He was, he was, was cherry. Yeah. yeah, very relaxing. Yeah, it was. Very relaxing. I like the fact that he addressed the issue of will and gift to children. So, yeah, you're in a polygamy. Rather than leave them to finally come and do cut to Wahala, settle them. Right. Take stock of your entire, take inventory of your entire properties and do the needful. Right. And if, I'm, I'm happy that for uh, is two things that for, so surprisingly, a lawyer would be the one to hear the court case and the one that was averted. <laughs> for me, what I heard was um, raising children, mm -hmm. how he raised his children, how he didn't just throw money at them or put them on permanent salary, but got them to be involved in the business. And I heard about how um, he felt the government should carry stakeholders along. You right. know? He felt that you don't make decisions like right. that in without... In terms of VAT. That, that was referring because the, the Fowler, the, Mr. Tony Fowler, had actually said that they're going to start deducting the VAT from source, from the people who buy the tickets. Mm. That means that if you buy a ticket for 100 Naira, mm. you get to pay 105 Naira mm. per, for, for, for slot. And he's saying, no, you should be on your winnings. Mm. Yes. So not, not just on your... So if you win more than you have staked, right. then you, you can, can be... Keep, but yeah. I, I heard the business part, which is about, I have a major problem with Luto. I think it's because he said, according to him, that um, it took people, people or it takes people off the streets. <laughs> but I have seen a lot of young people staking their lives, staking, selling properties just yeah. to play that yeah. game. And I do really like that yeah. fact but since he's making this his business there's nothing we can do right. about his business say, people are actually off the streets because there's employment for those that are vending many people are yeah. doing vending they are the middle people they are the subcontractors those so are actually that I off told the him was that in other countries mm -hmm. though the uh, lotteries are owned by the government and they use to raise funds for infrastructural development. Mm, okay. In Nigeria, private people are owning these things and they, are, they, are, they have access to so much money. And that's mm. why the regulators are trying to get a certain percentage is, is, is accrued to the government. But really, well, Mariah, shouldn't we, shouldn't the government, government should did it and it did not work? Yes, the government has no business in business. Right. They've not been successful. So the government should consider owning yeah, And I like his last break. advice. Mariah, you need to end on that again. Sorry? Remind yes, so people. Patience. Patience. You know, you must run, you must crawl before, before you run. Are. And everybody well, should take that home. So let's go on a break. We have another special guest. I said we have two interviews today. One with um, <laughs> Sir Kassintin and Babajebu actually. <laughs> and the other with a young man mm -hmm. who is a new lawmaker at the ninth leadership of the House of Assembly. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. 